the grace of God, I'm sure there are many more tonight that will be happy. Amen. Why? Because Jesus was going to perform a work in their life. Amen. The work of salvation, Amen. sanctification, Amen. baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. 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 Let's, uh, well, welcome to our evening service. And before we have been here, Jesus has been here. Amen. He has given us a beautiful weather. And uh, he wants to make it beautiful in our hearts, too. Yeah. We're going to continue our service by singing 357, 357, as we say thank you to the choir for SSNS, 357. Um, as we say thank you to the choir for those beautiful pieces. May God bless them. Amen. And may God increase their number. Amen. 357, sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sing them over.
Amen. Our next song is going to be number 533. 533. <clears throat> and as we sing that, um, Maybe we want to begin to think in our hearts and minds, any song, any um, special, any favorites we want to sing, we'll take one from this side, one from the middle, and one from that side, okay? After we've had five, double, three, tenderly guide us, O shepherd of love, to the green pastures and waters above, guiding us ever by night and by day, Amen. never from thee would we stray. So we'll take that after the orchestra. May that be the prayer of our hearts, Amen. that never from the Lord would we stray. Amen. Okay, let's take one from this side. 175. Okay, I think that converts to 319 in SSNS. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Okay, 319 SSNS. What a friend we have in Jesus. So we'll take that and, um, okay, we'll take the first two verses. First two verses. And what a friend we have in Jesus. I said that.
Amen. Amen. Yes, this middle column. Six, seven, one. Okay. It seems we are defaulting to CGS this, uh, this evening. No problem. Though the angry surges roll on my tempest driven soul, I am peaceful for I know. <laughs> they say you're on the edge. Don't worry. Yeah. Let us, let us stay in the middle of the middle of the road, huh? <laughs> God bless you. Though the angry search, 671 CGS. <coughs> So verses 1 and 3, verses 1 and 3. Amen. 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 Are you sure of, of your anchor this evening? Yeah. That anchor has been tried time over time. Years, decades, centuries, and it's still holding firm. Amen. May God help us to trust him. Amen. Yes, amen. Yes, the last column here. One, two, six. Do I take it as CGS? CGS, okay. <coughs> it seems we love CGS. My.
when we come together as children of God, what did Jesus promise to do? He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be there in their midst. You know what has just happened is a miracle. You know why? I've opened here to SSNS 902. If you have your SSNS, you'll know that that song is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. And the Spirit of God was just, I believe the Spirit of God was just ministering to me as I was, what if somebody should call that? And I said, I just felt, well, that's wonderful, that's fine. And true enough, that is exactly what happened. You know, it may seem that we're very few here. Maybe nothing seemingly special is going on. <laughs> but remember, God is here. Yeah. And because God is here, something is going to happen tonight. Amen. May you get yours. Amen. We're going to take that last verse, stand in for prayer. And as we sing it, just remember that God is here and wants to do something for you tonight. When that last trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Amen. That is all our prayer. Yeah. Shall we stand and sing it together ready for prayer? Yeah. When the... says where two or three are gathered together in your name your presence in our midst what opportunity we have in you that you can be in our midst to bless us to encourage us to admonish us Lord glory be unto your name the world has failed us there are sinking sand but you are the anchor that anchor that holds in times of tribulation, in times of sorrow, even in times of joy. Lord, glory be unto your name. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you're here. Thank you because you're here to bless us. Lord, our hearts are open before you. Lord, speak your word. Anoint your servant with the word. Let there be unction from above that they will be changing our lives, changing our situations, changing our circumstances. Lord, as many that came to you, Lord, you said you will in no wise cast out. We may have come with our sins. We may have come with our disappointments. We may have come with our challenges. Lord, we know you are above them all. You are able to do far abundantly than we can ever act and think. Lord, let that be our experience. Lord, if there are people watching through the internet, Lord, bless them. Some of our brethren may not have been here because of sickness. Lord, we pray that even as we rejoice over our circumstances, Lord, they will rejoice. Lord, you will heal them. Amen. You will touch them. Amen. You will meet the prodigal son. Amen. You will meet the wayward daughters. Amen. You will bring back all oh our brethren. Amen. Lord, do it. Amen. Lord, keep us, oh Lord, for that tr last trump. Amen. Lord, we want to make heaven. Amen. Prepare us Amen. in Jesus' name. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our evangelistic service. Our announcement will remain predominantly as we heard in the morning. Um, starting with the fact that um, next Saturday is going to be um, ladies' prayers, and it's going to be here between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And then also 
that there will be combined um, children's practice in Peckham on Saturday as well from, six, from 3 p.m. till 6 p.m. Um, we shall have our Sunday school at the usual time of 9.30 next Sunday should Jesus tarry, and then followed by devotional service. And in the evening, instead of having the evangelistic service as we're having now, it's going to be um, our usual quarterly um, quiz to review our lesson, um, Sunday school book that has just book 10, uh, that has just um, been finished, and that will be um, at 4 p.m. Remember the Salem Academy invite uh, for their end of term concert will be on Monday the 16th of July at 6.30 um, p.m. And also that uh, we continue to pray for our Portland Camp meeting. And uh, we will, when we finish today um, will be the time that they are starting their service. But at the same time, we can go back and watch it at um, apostolicfaith.org. And in the same vein, uh, we are a special program tomorrow in the Portland Camp meeting relating to the history of the Apostolic Faith Church in the UK and Western Europe. Um, you are also welcome to watch uh, at 7.30 p.m. our local time. Um, um, thank you very much for those of you um, that have offered one kind of assistance or the other when we had the congregational meeting um, this afternoon. Please, let's consolidate on all those suggestions and in order to enrich um, the experiences of our committee. And God bless you as you do that. Amen. We still enjoin you to check the CAM register in case names are missing. It's not obvious, but please let us know so that we can rectify them on time because it impacts on many other things surrounding our preparation. We want to listen to testimonies of what the Lord has done for you and not what you have done for God or for yourself. Let our testimonies be brief and straight to the point so that we can give as many people the opportunity to testify and then after that we will have the second special but before the testimony maybe the choir do you guys have a song for us yeah we have the first special and then after that testimonies before second special and then we have the word of exhortation
because he plunged me beneath the cleansing flood. Um, this song this evening really moved me to want to say thank you to Jesus. Um, first, for having mercy upon me that um, my parents were not of this gospel, but Jesus brought me as a little child into Sunday school. And even though everyone left me, uh, God is still keeping me going. And this became possible because he saved my soul and he sanctified me and endowed me with Holy Spirit. I so much thank God for these experiences that, you know, he can give you a heart. When there is something wrong, the spirit of God will speak to your heart. You'll be shaking. You cannot have rest until you make it right. It is an amazing experience. Wow. Sanctification is wonderful. Wow. And I thank God that I find myself feasting at the feet of Jesus Christ. Wow. I thank him. That verse 2 says, I, I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. I find myself falling into that category. My child has been blind. Jesus healed her. Wow. Um, I have been sick, Jesus healed me. My son has suffered meningitis, Jesus healed him. I have even had a son that died in my hand, totally gone, and there was no hope. And just a simple prayer, Jesus revived that son. And today he's still alive. So this story that I sing today about victory in Jesus is really true because Jesus has given me victory. And even a few days ago, my son had a bad day, and I had nothing to give him. I was just, I prayed openly. I even went down to the kitchen. I was praying as well. I said, Jesus, give him a, 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 a birthday present. Jesus, please give him a birthday present. Okay. You know, sometimes when you pray, you are full of unbelief, but at the same time, you are expecting something to happen. Do you know that Jesus did it? A day after that, he had a phone call that says, you have been given a job. Amen. Amazing. That is what God can do. Yeah. I, I, there is victory in Jesus. I have so many stories I can tell, but I want to say there is victory in Jesus, that I am alive this day from January. Jesus healed me till today. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. tonight, I want to share in that song, There is Victory for Me, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, for almost about two weeks now, my grandson had been sick. And I've been calling God, he will not eat. When we tell him, eat, say, no, I don't want to eat. We've taken him to the hospital. I, I told the parents, I said, this thing is prayer. When we pray, God is going to heal him. 
and one day they just come in, they said he, he said he want to eat yam. The grandma come, he want to eat yam. All right, I ran to, um, to the market to go and buy yam. When I go there, I said, ah, you have, a, yes, then my grandson, I have to do it. They cooked the yam, he ate part of it. After two days, he didn't want to eat again. But last week, Amen. I thank you, the people of God. He ate three times. Amen. Uh, God is merciful. God is great. My very self has had pain on my shoulder for almost about four or five months. And I've been talking to God. God, you have to come and heal me. All of a sudden, I don't know. Everything Amen. just went. Uh, God has been so merciful to me. He has been so gracious to me. Please help me to pray. These two boys are my daughter-in-law. I'm my grandchildren. I'm all my people. That go. I don't want to be alone here. I want them to come and join me. Amen. Please help me to pray. That God will save them. Amen. And bring them here. Thank you very much, the people of God. I love you. I want to just thank God tonight. God is merciful. Amen. God is uh, patient. Amen. You know, I just want to thank God for searching me out. Recently, my wife and I were enjoying a gospel song in our kitchen. And I asked her, do you remember that I used to be a member of a secular musical band? I said, yes, I remember that you, you told me that you used to be, um, be part of them. But uh, it was God that actually brought you out himself. And that kind of sinks into my head every now and then. I came from a family where, whereby my dad and his two brothers, I think between the three of them, they had about 25 children. Of course, my dad had just three. And out of those 25, it was only me that God gave the grace to pass the equivalent of year nine here. Just one out of 25. Yeah, it, it was it, how God had just been taking care of me even when I was still in the world. He was just leading me one step at a time from a very poor background. How he provided for me through my, through my you know, secondary school, higher institution, just took care of everything. When I just think about that, I was like, why me? Why me? No, I could have died like many of those 25 died. But he just took care of me. I just want to thank him. I just want to praise him because he's just loving and he's caring and he's patient. I just want you to pray that, you know, God will just continue to uphold me. And at last, I just want to see him face to face so I can say thank you fully to him. Um, I, I want to give good praise to God. I'm really thankful to God for saving my soul. I'm so, so thankful, th thankful for, for that. Because without that, I don't think I would, I, I would be here. Um, I really also want to thank God for how he's been looking after myself and my family over the last um, many years. And I just want to give God the praise be because about two weeks ago, we celebrated 14 years of being, being married and I just can't be believe it. I'm like, wow, like 14 years. Like, how did that happen? You know, when I was getting married, I was looking up at, at aunties who were like 15 years married. And, and I'd be like, wow, like, how, how can you be married for, for 15 years? It's such a very long, long time. But now, like, I'm getting there and I'm just so grateful to, to, to God. You know, one of my biggest um, wor um, worries was that like, I just didn't want to, to, want to get it wrong. And I'm so thankful. I, you know, I just give God the praise every day. And, I, oh, yeah. you know, I, I, I told God that, you know, when I was getting married or when I was still single, that if God did it for me, that I would testify every single Sunday. But I haven't really been, been doing that. But I just thank God that God has really been faithful. Oh, and I, I just give God the praise. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Jesus? I'm talking of my Jesus. <laughs> Do you know him? You only heard a snapshot of what he's capable of. You only heard what people could fit into, is it 60? 120 seconds. But <laughs> I'm sure that even from what you heard, you know that you want to know my Jesus. Open with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Sorry, but chapter 11 from verse 9. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 9. Verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 reads, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the next chapter, verses from verse 1, reads, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Then it goes on to begin to list all those things that begin to kick in as you begin to advance in age. He talks of the sun, the moon, the stars being darkened. It talks of those that look out of the windows. Yes. Being darkened. The eyes, they begin to lose their function. It talks about those that, it says the keepers of the house, they begin to tremble. What are the keepers of the house? What keeps the house tidy? My father used to say, in other words, it is the hands that put things right. When the keepers of the house begin to shake, have you not seen them? When they, they're just standing, but the, the, the hand is shaking. Why? They have advanced in age. <laughs> these were some, you know some of these, the, the, especially as young people, may God open our hearts and minds to just understand these things. You see, those people that now you're seeing, and they're going very, very, very gently. 
They are, you, you see them, they, 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 the keepers of the house are now trembling and shaking. Uh, once upon a time, they fought in a war. It's not weaklings that fight on the battlefront. They are tough men that fight. But you see, the Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before that time kicks in. He begins to talk of all various, 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 various things. He says that we, the, the doors will be shut in the streets. Where you could dress up. Yeah, I'm going to meet my friend. You go out. You don't even think twice. You open the door, you go out, you come back. This time, you're even scared to open your door. Yeah? The doors are shut. And the sound of the grinding is low. Where you used to enjoy, you like, you like making sure that people are around, the boisterous atmosphere. This time, noise is a problem. Noise is an issue. He says, where? And he shall rise up at the voice of a bird. A bird will, what's that? <laughs> because, yeah, they, 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 oh. May we be wise. Amen. Yes. And it shall be. You, you, I'm reading from verse 4. Rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music be brought low. Where music was enjoyable to him before. It's now a disturbance. It's, it, it, it causes him discomfort. And they shall be afraid of that which is high. <laughs> Not only those who are who have vertical. This one, he does. He, they, they dare not go anything above ground level. And it goes on and on and on. It talks of fears being in the way. <laughs> you know, I, I've not reached anywhere near that age yet. But you know that even as of now, there are some things that. I dare not try now. That before, I wouldn't even think twice. I wouldn't, well, what's the big deal? <laughs> but now, I, I don't, don't even talk about it. Why? You know, time is flying. Eternity is zooming in. Are you prepared for the inevitable. That's what God wants to talk to us about tonight. Are you prepared for what is ahead? <laughs> you know, whether you like it or not, it is ahead. It is coming. What is coming? Not just death. You know, death is only a passage. <laughs> The more important thing we're talking about is eternity. Yeah. That time without time. <laughs> the God who made time, but he himself dwells outside of time. <laughs> God is to be feared. By the time we close our eyes here in terms of time, and that closing of our eyes could be by death. And remember, young people, young people also die. Oh, yes, they do. Have you heard anything in the news recently? The old die. The middle-aged die. Everybody is at risk. <laughs> but there's also another, another even more imminent for many of us. And that is the rapture of the saints. At the point where that event will take place. My Bible says, where the tree falleth, there it shall be. At that point, you know, may God bless our children. Amen. There were some few camp meetings ago that we had um, a children's service. It was about the coming back of Jesus. And... Um, the lesson went, there were many, many things that the children could identify with. Fast, Usain Bolt, the fastest runner at that time. A very fast car. Concord, that used to be the fastest, you know, flying plane. 
get from here over to over the over, over the, 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 the the Atlantic. You're in America in few hours. But the children were then asked. But the coming of Jesus, how fast is that? And they were all asked to just blink your eye. Let's all try that. Just blink your eye. That's it. It's all over. Now, imagine if that blink of the eye was the trumpet sound as of just the time you blinked your eye. Where would eternity have met you? Let's think about that a moment. If you are prepared, you know you still need to check your baggage. Because on this journey, when you get to the airport, they always watch you. They always tell you. What do they tell you? Keep an eye on your bags. Don't let anybody add any load for you. Don't carry any load for anybody. We are now at the airport, spiritually speaking. Don't let anybody put anything in your load. Don't carry anything for anybody. Whichever way they came for you to carry it, whether by talk or by phone or by text or by whatever, don't carry any contraband for anybody. We are at the airport. Let us turn together to Luke chapter 16. From verse 1. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a servant, a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer be steward. Then he, the steward answered within himself, ah, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what I will do. What to do? That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Five. So he called every one of his lords that unto him and said unto the first, How much is thou unto my lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said, Come, he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write, write 50. He then said he to another, And how much is thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, take thy bill and write four score. What's four score? Eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. Because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Ah! <laughs> there is a depth of meaning in that last statement that may God open our eyes to. Amen. The children of this world, <laughs> they are preparing for what is ahead. They are preparing for the inevitable. But my Bible is telling me that many of them, they are wiser than the children of light. Oh. Many of the children of light are not wise in the sense that they are not preparing for the inevitable. They are not preparing for what is ahead. Why did that Lord commend him? Because the steward realized, hey, I'm in trouble today. This is the end of my contract with this Lord. He's going to kick me out. When I get out, what am I going to do? I cannot begin to dig. I've passed that stage. Um, to beg, am I going to begin to street on the sit on the street corner and be begging? I can't do that. Ah, what will I do? What will I do? What will I do? He was already thinking, cal calculating. How? Ah, what will I do? What will I do? What will I do? And in preparation, he made preparation. What was his own preparation? Yes, he tried to use human wisdom concerning eternity. You cannot use human wisdom wisdom about it. You must use God's wisdom, and God's wisdom says. Make preparation for now is the accepted time. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of salvation. Have you been saved? Not only have you 
Are you saved? Currently. Remember what we did just now. If Jesus had come at that time, you blinked your eye. Can sincerely, does the spirit of God witness with your spirit that by the special grace of God, I would have gone? If it does not, oh, you are in trouble. But you can settle it tonight. He made preparation for Hyde. Come, 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 come. How much do you owe my Lord? I, I owe him 100 measures of what? Come, come. Write 50. Write 50. Don't worry. Write 50. What was he doing? He was giving him discount. On what was not his own. But he was giving him discount. The first one. The second one. What's your 100 measures? Don't worry. Write 80. Write 80. He wrote 80. What was he doing? He was sorting himself out with them so that by the time his Lord has now kicked him out, uh, at least I helped you the other day now. Yeah, yeah, you scratch my own back too now. That was using man's wisdom. But the, my Bible says his Lord commended him. And he gave a warning. He said, for the children of the world are in their generation wiser. <laughs> And the children of light. Who are the children of light, brothers and sisters? Is it not those who have professed salvation? Is it not those who have been saved? But are we wise in preparing for what is ahead? Are you wise, my brother? Are you wise, my sister? The John 32, 29 says, oh, that they were wise. That they understood this. That they would consider their latter end. Luke 21, 34, and 36 tells us, And take it to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and so that they come on you unawares. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The essence is to be able to stand before the Son of Man. Why? Because Luke 21, 35 tells us, For as a snare shall it come on all, that, all them that dwell on the face of the earth. For as a snare will that day of the Lord come. That rapture event, it will come as a snare. Do you know what a snare is? A snare is a hidden trap. You don't know, you don't see it. You don't prepare for it, but may you be prepared. Yeah. May I be prepared. Yeah. It is coming as a snare. Eternity is heading for you at a serious speed. And my Bible says it is that day that is coming for eternity. It's coming as a snare. But did you know what? Christ died to salvage your future. Did you hear me? Christ Jesus Christ died to salvage you from eternity. And if tonight you will come to him and say, Jesus Christ, please have mercy upon me. Save my soul. I want to be sure. Jesus Christ will do that for you tonight. In closing, let us read Luke 16, 19 to 20. 19, 20 few verses there. There was a certain rich man. Please understand that this wasn't a parable. Huh? This wasn't a parable. Apparently in the original Greek as it is written, it is written as what happened, a story of something that happened. Yes? There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. In other words, <laughs> the best of the best. And feared sumptuously every day. His own was the top of the top, the cream of the cream. 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores. <laughs> then 22 tells us, and it came to pass that the beggar died. So, people of God, beggars die over. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Oh, so rich men too die. Okay. So by inference, the high die, the low die. The learned die, the illiterate die. 
Everybody has an appointment with death. But remember what he said about the beggar? He died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, not because he was poor, but because beforehand, whether he was poor or anything, he had still made preparation. If a poor man can make preparation for heaven, eh, me and you, we don't have excuse. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, a very real hell, he lifted up his, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham and Pharaoh and Lazarus in his bosom. You see, many people talk of hell on earth. They don't know anything about hell. Many people talk of heaven. Oh, rest in peace. He was a good man. He stole, but he was a good man. Rest in peace. <laughs> if you did not finish it in Jesus, there is no resting in peace for you. That is the blunt truth. And unfortunately, we're here to speak the truth. Not unfortunately. We're here to speak the truth. But if you finish it with Jesus, <laughs> my Bible says, perfect peace Amen. have they that trust in me. And that will keep him in perfect peace, Amen. whose heart is stayed on thee. Amen. Do you know that it takes this peace of God in the heart to face death in the face, and it doesn't move you? This is not a matter of I am bigger than I am. No, no, no. There is a quiet confidence that I know my Redeemer liveth. And I know that whatever may happen, Lord, your choice and your will be done. That is why people of God, some whom we have known, some whom we have touched, we have shaken their hand, we have interacted with them, we have seen them with our eyes. Have you not seen them? Right as we are talking, they are in Abraham's bosom. Are you preparing for the inevitable? Are you prepared for what is ahead? The altars of prayers are open. May God bless us when we pray. Heavenly Father, you have spoken to us this evening. We want you to come and help us to number our days. As we go on our knees to pray, we pray that you help us to reconnect with you. Heaven is yours, and you have prepared it for us. 
it is your pleasure that we come there. Help us to take note. Thank you for the message. Visit us, O oh Lord, on our knees. Save souls tonight. Sanctify souls, O oh Lord. Baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Give us conviction that will make us to be with you in that as above. Because you love us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.